CES 2026. As you would expect from a convention filled with us nerds, there was no shortage of cool. You watch your mouth. Listen, these vendors were breaking more boundaries than a bully. Whether you were wetting grass or yourself, wow. it was here. It's On this channel, I primarily focus on smart home tech and automations. So being at CES, the obvious thing to talk about would be robot vacuums, smart locks, and cameras. But instead, I wanna to talk to you about the next evolution of the smart home experience, and that's wearables. I'm gonna take my 20 hours of hunting through CES and go through the top five wearables I think can take your smart home to new heights. And the last one is gonna trigger some of you. Be prepared. Starting with Pebble. How many of you actually know about Pebble? Now, Pebble predates the Apple Watch and fun fact, was the first smartwatch I've ever owned. Pebble was among the first to the wearable race and they were later acquired by Fitbit and then shut down. This time around, they're taking a different approach and they're focusing on creating beautiful watches that are easy to customize. Now these watches sport an e-paper display that's always on and you would think that the battery life would be trash on these type of watches and you're technically correct if you think a 30 day battery life is trash. It's water resistant, has step track, tracking, sleep tracking, heart rate tracking, a barometer, a compass sensor. It's, it's kind of chocked full of stuff. And like most other smartwatches, it also includes a microphone and speakers. But that's not why I like it though. What I like about it is that it's open source. Google has open sourced the Pebble OS, which means that you have the ability to build apps for it and customize it at a much deeper level. And I was very happy to see that you can access things like the accelerometer, health data, and even the microphone. And with this level of access to the device, you can trigger smart home automations from your wrist either by voice or discreetly through button presses. You can even trigger automations through arm motions using the accelerometer data. And since this device is Bluetooth, think of the possibilities if you combine it with ES Presence. If you don't know what ES Presence is, you can check out this video that's gonna be floating around here somewhere. Something else to note about this is that Pebble can track health related data, like heart rate, number of steps, and number of minutes you're asleep. Whether you simply wanna track it for yourself or use it in a way to trigger automations, it's gonna be completely up to you. However, Pebble wasn't built with health in mind. So this brings me to the next wearable. One of the vendors I stumbled upon in CES was Amazfit. Now, their device looks very fancy with a fancier subscription model, but I nearly broke my damn neck doing a double take when the rep told me that there was no subscription needed. Guys, I nearly bought a device on the spot. In this upcoming smart home era, context will be king and your home will need to know things about you in order to truly anticipate your needs. In simple terms, just how your home can use, let's say a motion sensor to detect presence, your health will become another sensor your home can use to detect your preference. Specialized health focused devices like the Helio strap can measure with greater accuracy your heart rate, blood oxygen levels, sleep quality, and stress levels. And imagine that you have high blood pressure. I know you all are really healthy and get your steps in, but just imagine with me for a moment. Your home could assist you by tracking your health data, suggest workouts and recipes, and provide motivational reminders all based on your progress. Let me, let me play devil's advocate for a moment. You have all of this cool stuff and I'm saying, hey, you can build all these things with it. Why would you wanna do that? As a matter of fact, all of this stuff already existed. Like we had smartwatches for the longest time, for over a decade really, and we've had apps even longer than that that does all this tracking. What makes things different now? And the answer is AI. When it comes to smartwatches, companies like Apple and Samsung and Google get around the gimmick of like smartwatch utility by making their watches an extension of their ecosystem. If you have an Apple Watch, you most likely have an iPhone. If you have a Galaxy Watch, you most likely are in the Android ecosystem. Now, people rarely mix and match because the experience would suck and they'd probably be wasting hundreds of dollars by leaving features on the table. However, with AI, the utility of ecosystem agnostic devices are growing and spreading into other domains, like the Helio Strap, for instance. It works regardless of whether you use Apple or Android. And again, again, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. This has always been the case. We're already able to build integrations
connections to get information into home assistant and, and do all of these things so technically things like the helio strap isn't brand new but having ai does two things for us the first thing is ai lets us gather insights around data and it even lets us take action on it now this is very powerful especially for data that may be in a raw format like text or maybe csv so that means that you can take information from these devices and then do some really powerful processing and automations around it based on the context of what the data is to code this out would be a nightmare or at least very tedious, but having AI makes this a lot easier. The second thing is that AI makes it easy for those who don't know how to code or to build integrations to do it for themselves. That means that this community doesn't have to wait for developers and engineers like myself to build things. They can get the ball rolling sooner and gather support for it after the fact. So here's the bottom line. We can have open source watches that can be built to fit our needs regardless of the ecosystem to which we belong. Next on the list are AR glasses. I'm not going to linger on this long because the user experience for this is, um, but I still think it's worth exploring. Now I saw several AR glasses in CES, but Inmo or INMO, I'm going to call them Inmo just to set the stage. AR glasses basically overlay information in the real world, which allows you to interact both with the physical and the metaphysical at the same time. In the best case scenario, your home would be able to send information to your glasses. Let's say your house sprung a leak. Home Assistant would then send a notification to your glasses. Or let's say someone comes to your door while you're away, then Home Assistant could stream the doorbell video to your glasses. The thing is that I don't think the current user behavior is malleable enough for people to forego looking at their phones because that's what we're basically asking them to do by having these glasses. Now, Inmo does have a developer platform, so I would love to see what people come up with in regards to the smart home experience, but I don't think that that AR glasses will work simply because it's not enhancing the user experience. It's only really trading one interaction for another with no significant benefit. I talk about that concept with the smart home user heuristics. I'll put a link to that somewhere here too as well. All right, moving on. The next smart home wearable device that shows promise is smart rings. Now this by far was the most popular wearable type I've seen at CES. I lost count with the number of smart rings that I saw and that came out. It was, it was crazy. Some were very functional while others were very ostentatious. However, the majority of folks that developed smart rings made it so that it would be impossible for the smart home community to leverage it without hacking the device. That kind of sucked. But there were two rings that I want to show you that did catch my fancy. Health rings monitor your health, duh. They do this by measuring a variety of biomarkers. For example, Amazfit has a ring that measures the same biomarkers that their strap does. That's like sleep, heart rate, so on and so forth. Another product called the JC ring can go even further by measuring your body temperature and blood glucose. I'm gonna say this, I'm not going to debate on how accurate these devices are. From my perspective, companies at CES are just there to flex. So I take all of their propaganda with a handful of salt. However, if we take their devices for what they claim, your smart home can attune itself to you in a way that's meaningful and that's not based off of the user avatars that companies design their apps and devices after. Here's what I mean. Imagine your home detecting that you're stressed or sick because you're wearing this ring and it can detect those things. And then it can basically ask you if it can make changes to your environment to help you be more comfy. That can be a variety of things like opening windows, closing blinds, readjusting the AC, whatever the case may be. The idea is that your home knows that you're stressed or knows that you're sick and and it's able to then respond or even bring it to your awareness. Wearables like these gives your home another layer of information to work with to create a uniquely optimized environment for you. The last wearable may be my favorite because of both its utility and its controversial nature. Now, this is Omi. Its job is super simple. You wear it on your neck, and it captures your conversations. Now, it's not the first of its kind, as I saw other devices similar to it, like Plod. The use case these devices solve are for note-taking, 
I'm gonna just put that in asterisk. It's for note taking. You dictate your thoughts and then you go about your day as normal and it captures all the information and transcribes it. As an aside, when I saw the design, it reminded me of a Black Mirror episode I watched recently. Okay, so what really drew me to this product was that it does not require a subscription and you get complete control over your data. You heard me right. You get to own your data. So, okay, so I want to be very clear. It's absolute, it's with this device, I can develop, let's say my own application and use your SDK or APIs to connect and have it like send information back and forth. Additionally, it's also fully open source. Our software, hardware, everything. Where can I go with Yes, you heard him right. It's open source. This is what got me excited. It's weird that that got me excited, but I'm a nerd, so. I guess I can take the hardware and retrofit it for my smart home. That's that's essentially the moral of this story. And for me, this goes beyond simply turning off and on lights without needing to pull up my phone or having to be close to voice PE or some other smart speaker nearby. Like this, this is more than that. This is basically like adding more memory and processing power to my wetware. Every fleeting idea, every whimsical thought, every conversation, every interaction, is memorized, categorized, prioritized, and summarized for me to recall at some later point in time. You have no idea how many times I've had conversations where I lose my train of thought, or I attempted to write down uh, some next step or some to do, and I open my app just for me to stare blankly at it. Not anymore. Not anymore. The moment a thought comes to mind, all I need to do is just murmur it and it's captured. I mean, like the only way this gets better is that if it can just pull it from my mind without me having to say anything, but we're not there yet. Or are we? For now, this device is gonna have me looking even more crazy talking to myself. Now, why is this controversial? Well, in the US, states have different laws around wiretapping and recording conversations. Recording conversations requires consent from both parties. I thought it was a pretty clever move by Omi to create a device that works offline and lets you keep your data local. Now, this helps remove a big chunk of that icky factor people have when they are being recorded. But this fact only removes that ickiness for you, the person who actually owns the device. But this doesn't account for the other people who are still unaware that they're being recorded. This is where some gray lines come into place. The device emits a blue light when it's on and active. And the idea is that this is to help others know that they're being recorded. However, when I saw the blue light, if I didn't know what the device was, I wouldn't think I'm being recorded. So I take all of this with like a large ocean of salt. Legalities aside, I still think that this is a powerful tool. Smart home tech is no longer just about light bulbs and door locks and cameras and the typical stuff that we always talk about. It's about you enhancing your life and that can take many facets. And technically, the only way to get to that next level and to do that is that your home is gonna need more context. Context is king. It's gonna need it. It's gonna be way more than what motion sensors and cameras are gonna be able to give. And these dope wearables can provide that information. I placed a link to a post which lists all the products and some honorable mentions I didn't talk about in the description. I even included some discount codes where applicable, so go and check that out. And some of those links are affiliate. Using them is appreciated as it helps out this channel. I'm also planning on experimenting with some of these devices and build out some of the automations I mentioned in this video. So if you're into smart home tech and creative automations, subscribe.